welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm Judy Taylor, President of the Eversham County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us. My guests today are Ann Nicely with the Alliance for African American Music, the February Member of the Month, and Myra Chandler with the Mountain Education Charter School. And my first guest is Ann Nicely. Welcome, Ann. Thank you so very much. And you've been on before. I have. But it's always good to have you back. It's a pleasure to be here. And I, let's just start off by telling our audience, when did the Alliance for African American Music first begin? Actually, it started 23 years ago. Really? Uh, at Grace Calvary in uh, uh, Clarksville. Uh, St. Julian Lassicotti was the rector there, mm -hmm. and he got in touch with the pastor at Shady Grove um, to put music together because he had been brought up listening to Negro spirituals. Mm -hmm. So they got together, and we had that first program, I believe, in maybe 1990. Interesting. And it was very good, so it's been going very good ever since. Well, I have heard a lot about this, and I know some people who sing with you okay. in your concert. And But tell us, what is the purpose of the Alliance? Well, actually, it's to pull ethnic groups together uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, we are so divided. Mm -hmm. And and we thought he thought if we started something that could pull white and black and all, all ethnic groups together, mm -hmm. that we could do that through music. That is a wonderful way to pull people together. I just love this idea, Anne. But um, I do believe that there is a scholarship associated with this, right? Yes, it is. Uh, every year we give a $1,500 scholarship to a musical student at Piedmont College. Okay, so they all it is a scholarship to Piedmont College. Yeah, to a music student. And they, in turn, match that scholarship with $1,500. What is the name of that scholarship, Ann? Uh, Lachicott Strickland Scholarship. That makes sense because he was the rector at the church, right? Right. And who is the Strickland? The Strickland was the first pastor of Shady Grove, so Pastor McQuarrie wanted to put it in his name rather than, than his. Mm -hmm. So that's what they did. That is interesting. Well, do you give a scholarship every year every or year. do you skip some years? Unless we don't have a student mm -hmm. uh, that is in the music, uh, the minority student, then we don't give a scholarship. Mm -hmm. We hold that until we have a student. But every year, uh, for the last past, I guess, seven, eight years, we've had a student mm -hmm. to um, receive that scholarship. Who are some of the students who have received your scholarships? Do you remember any of the names? Uh, Portia Burns uh, received. She would have been a great one. Mm -hmm. Did and she go on to meet uh, on to Piedmont and, then, and graduate from Piedmont? She did. She surely did. And now she's teaching at Gainesville uh, uh, Elementary, no, middle school. And um, Lydia, I can't remember her last name, but she was um, Latina, so mm -hmm. she got a scholarship mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. This year, our scholarship will go to uh, Lottie. Coffee. Um, she's a student here from Africa. Oh, really? Yes. Very mm -hmm. interesting. Well, how is that scholarship funded? Where do you get your fifteen hundred dollars? Well, actually, we send out letters every year to the community, and we have different businesses um, mm -hmm. to send us funds for it. Uh, we also take up a love offering at the program uh, to help defray costs and for the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, uh, the main event is a concert. Yes. Now, who is the host church this year? Uh, Where will it be held? It will be held at the Kenya United Methodist Church. It's been there for several years. Yes, it, it has. Uh -huh. And what is the date this year? Uh, February the 16th at 3 o'clock p.m. February the 16th, 3 p.m. Yes. at the First United Methodist Church in Grenada. Right. And uh, what is the theme this year? Because usually you all have a theme associated with this concert. Yes. This year we're using uh, Sing a New Song. Okay, mm -hmm. so are we going to be hearing some new songs? Hopefully. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, usually you team up with, uh, I know last year I think you teamed up with maybe Reinhardt College? No, that was the year? previous the year. The previous mm -hmm. year. Well, uh, who is your featured guest this year? Well, actually, we don't really have a, a guest from out of town or anything like that. We're doing the local church in the schools, the local churches in the school. 
Well, that's, I like the idea that you are doing local people, mm -hmm. and you'll be featuring some local talent, I Right, guess. right. We got five different churches, and then B.J. Addison from Habersham Central is going to bring his choir. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, do you know what the five churches are? I'm just wondering if my church <laughs> is one of them. Um, let's see, we get the United Methodist Church, um, Shady Grove, Mount Zion, uh, Grace Calvary, In the school, maybe it's just the okay. school. Yes, school. but they're all local. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that you have a, a board that the Alliance for African American Music, you have a board. Yes. Who are some of your board members? Well, I'm chairperson. Um, Bill Lord is, is a member. Um, Andrea Harper. Commissioner um, Harper. Yes, Commissioner mm -hmm. Harper. Uh, Terry Stone, uh, Vanessa Burns, um, John Andrews. Uh, Stella Ellison and Amy Bell. I mean Stella Hatcher mm -hmm. and Amy Bell. So you all have a, a distinguished board there. Yeah, we're looking for more people though. <laughs> you are, you're looking for board members. <laughs> yes. Well, let's talk about how someone can get involved in the Alliance. Uh, if, someone, if someone is interested in singing in the concert, or just getting involved with you, maybe getting on your board or whatever, how what should they do? Well, actually, we have our meetings um, on second Tuesday in the month. Uh, it's only from September through March um, at the Cornelia Library Stewart Room. And if anybody's interested in being a part, they can just come to one of those meetings it's at 530. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to sing in the choir, any choir, um, they can actually contact me at my home phone. 706-778-6001 or my um, email nicely at winstream.net. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me this. Do you have to have really special talent to sing in your choir? <laughs> or if you sing in your own church choir, would it, could you probably get a, uh, a place in your choir? I think as long as you can carry a tune. Well, that leaves me out, Ann. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I, maybe it wouldn't leave me out, but it probably would. But but anyone who who has a voice, who can carry a tune, and anyone who's interested, they can get involved if they want to. Oh yes, oh yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just really appreciate your coming on. You come on most every year. Yes. And talking about this because I think this is just one of the best programs that we have around. And to do what you said to bring the cultures together and to promote unity and harmony, and I just appreciate it so very much. Thank you so very much for having me. Well, I just wish you the best of luck with your program this year. And again, tell our audience the date of the program. <clears throat> okay, our celebration will be February the 16th, 2014, at 3 o'clock p.m. at the Kenya United Methodist Church. And you can just show up. You don't have to have tickets in advance. No. You can just show up, and just if you want to up. make a, a donation, you, there will be a love offering taken. That's right. That's right. And thank you again for being on. Please stay with us. We're going to take a short commercial break, and we will be right back with our member of the month. Hear from your doctors at Chester T Regional Hospital. Any community that's growing like this community is, needs a good medical facility uh, for people to go to. We have an exceptional level of medical and surgical efficiencies in the area. You're going to get the same care here you would anywhere in the country. Chesney does offer a very personal touch and I think that's one of the greatest assets of the hospital. And it should be supported to help keep the community going. Thank you for staying with us. Our next guest is the February Member of the Month, Circle of Hope, represented by, by Suzanne Dow, who is Executive Director. Is that right, Suzanne? That's correct. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you for having me. We appreciate your being on today, and congratulations on being the member of the month. Well, thank you. It was a huge honor. Well, yeah. our board takes that very seriously. They vote on it, and they look at a lot of different businesses or organizations, and they just knew what you had done for so many people, particularly during the Christmas season. So we do appreciate what you have done. 
Suzanne, we all wish that an agency such as yours were not needed in Haversham County. We wish we didn't need you, but we do. So tell our audience why an agency such as Circle of Hope is needed in Haversham County and the community. Okay. Well, domestic violence, unfortunately, is you know not an isolated um, event or, or issue for our, for our community. It happens to many people throughout the nation and, and including in Habersham County. Um, statistically, one in four women will experience abuse at some point in their lifetime and even more dangerously, one in three teenagers will experience dating violence um, as a teenager, which is where a lot of this starts and, and as after being a teenager they ultimately can form adult relationships where the cycle continues. Um, and everybody's impacted by it. The businesses, um, family members, children who are growing up in homes with abuse. So it's, it's definitely an issue that, that affects all types of people that we, that we touch. Our agency exists so that we can um, provide safety and resources for people who are trying to get out of that kind of relationship and break that cycle. And we serve an average of 540 families a year. So there's definitely a need in the community for something such as what we provide to help families. With serving that many families or that many, helping that many people, there certainly is a need for it. Where do we rank in the statistics with other counties? Do you know, uh, Suzanne? I do not know, um, as far as Habersham County. Um, with I, ranking against, say, our neighbors. Right, right. Well, it's it's high. Um, the Habersham County Sheriff's Department in the past two years has, re has responded to over 700 calls related to family violence, mm -hmm. and not everybody calls law enforcement, so that's a low estimate mm -hmm. as far as... Um, I do not know the comparison as, as far as the other counties. I do well, know it's, it probably would be higher because we our population is, is higher. It is, definitely. So uh, probably higher as far as incidents. Maybe right. not higher as far as percentage. Right. right. But tell, uh, tell our audience about your emergency shelters and your outreach program. Okay. Most people are familiar, or at least when they think of Circle of Hope, they think about our shelter, because that's what we're known for. We've been running an emergency shelter since 1990. Um, it is an eight-bedroom home with 17 beds, and we take in women and children who have no safe place to go when they're fleeing a domestic violence situation. And while they're in the shelter, they are provided with food and um, toiletries and medical needs. You know, anything that we can do to address their, their needs, we provide while they're there. Uh, we also have 24-hour staff coverage, counseling services, support groups, um, just different programs to, to, you know, address the emotional things that they've been going through as well. Um, what we started in the, in the mid-90s was a large outreach program, which is for victims of abuse who don't need shelter, but they're experiencing domestic violence. And so they might need um, assistance getting a, a temporary protective order, which is a, a legal document that a judge signs that um, tells the person doing the abusing to, to, to stop and to stay away from, mm -hmm. from the person they're victimizing. Uh, we help with, with a lot of those every year. Um, somebody in our outreach program might want counseling services. They might want to attend our weekly support group. Uh, they might need help creating a safety plan for when they are ready to escape the relationship. So um, we serve a lot of people in our outreach program. We end up serving about 100 families in our, in our shelter program, but, but over 400 families in our outreach program every mm -hmm. year. Well, I've heard that you also provide assistance for families after they leave your shelter. That is true, yes. So explain that for a little bit, because okay. that, would that be with the entire family, the father and the mother and no, children? No, no, it's, 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 it's families, it's women and children um, who have left that relationship, that abusive relationship, and, okay. and moved on into independent situations with, without that person who was doing the abusing. Um, and we call them supportive housing programs. And we, we started these programs because shelter is short term. The average length of stay is 30, 30 days. And, and over the years, we started seeing the same families returning to our, our shelter for services. And, and so we wanted to do something more long term and be able to impact these families for a longer period of time. So we pursued what we call um, supportive housing programs. And, and we have three different ones. Um, they range from being a year long. Um, the, one of them is a year long, one of them is two years long, and the other one is, is, is as long as the person needs it. Um, and between all these programs, we basically lease 20 apartment units um, and have one large home that had been donated to us in 2012. Mm -hmm. and, and so we can work with about 30 families on a long-term basis. They transition out of the shelter when we have an opening in, into one of these programs, um, and we, they're able to receive case management, counseling, um, 
any kind of assistance that we can provide on a more long-term basis to really help that family break that cycle mm -hmm. that they've been experiencing. That's wonderful, Suzanne, that you all can help them at different stages. Right. You not only can help them in a crisis stage, but you can then help them as they begin to get become independent. Right. Right. So that's, that is very good. Now, I know that you get some of your funding from thrift stores. We do. Let's talk about your thrift stores. How many do you have? Two, one in Clarksville and one in Cornelia. And tell me, where do you get the inventory for your thrift stores? From people. From people. <laughs> right. From okay. our donors. Um, yes, the, the store is strictly based on donations that we receive from individuals in the community who, who bring household items, clothes, um, kitchen decorating items, anything that you have in your home, we accept at our mm -hmm. stores. And then we resell those items to the public, which generates revenue for our programs. Um, and we also are able to help the people that we're serving with their needs when they're moving out, you know, um, not independently, just our, right? Yeah. Not just into mm -hmm. our housing program, but we help people secure their own apartments in the community. Mm -hmm. And so we we provide them with the furniture and the kitchen items and the things that they need to, to start those those. Do households. the donors get a tax right out? They do. Everything is is tax deductible. Tax deductible. Yes. Okay. Well, what is the criteria to receive services from the Circle of Hope? And, and it depends on which program. If if they're, if somebody's needing shelter services, mm -hmm. um, those are for those services are for people who feel they're in danger. It doesn't have to have been a, 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 an act of abuse that happened yesterday or, mm -hmm. you know, that, that recently. It could have been um, before, but things were escalating again and they know that they're potentially in danger of, of violence occurring um, and that they have no safe place to go. So for the shelter, it's that they're in danger and they have no safe place to go. For our outreach program, we're more flexible and it can be that um, somebody that's struggling with the effects of abuse that, that it could have been, you know, years ago that they experienced it, but emotionally they're still dealing with that. Mm -hmm. or more currently and in need of services at a, at a moment of crisis when something has just happened. So mm -hmm. that, that program has a little bit more flexibility. But Well, what about the youth prevention program? I think you have a youth prevention program. We do. We do. That is another program that we started after seeing a need of um, young mothers coming to the program that had been in the shelter in the early 90s, and mm -hmm. now they were young adult mothers and returning to our program. And so we, as an agency, knew that, that we'd been doing this shelter thing for quite a while, doing mm -hmm. that well, but we needed to do more prevention. And so we started... You needed to break the cycle. We did. And so we started a school prevention program in 2003, so it's been going on for, for over 10 years now. At Haversham Central High School or where? All the schools. Oh, all, all the schools. schools. Okay. Um, in all three counties that we serve because we also serve Stevens and White Counties. Um, we start with, with pre-K and kindergartners. Um, those young children get a curriculum that's called Hands Are For Helping, Not Hitting, um, teaching them how to, to manage, you know, that you don't use violence when you're angry and mm -hmm. um, you use your hands to help people and do kind things. Um, as they get older, we start doing some bullying activities with the middle school youth, and then as they get into dating, um, dating relationships, older middle school and, and high school and college level, we do dating violence prevention work. Well, Suzanne, tell our audience how they can get in touch with you if they need help or if they want to volunteer and be involved. Great. Um, if, if anybody's interested in volunteering, they can call us at the administrative office, which is 706-776-3406, or they could look for information on our website and even apply to volunteer on our website, which is www.gacircleofhope.org. And if they are need, somebody's in need of services, um, there is a toll-free number, but we also have a local hotline number. It's answered 24 hours a day, and the local number is 706-776-4673, and the toll-free number is 1-800-33-HAVEN, H-A-V-E-N, which will connect a caller in Georgia to the shelter closest to them. Well, Suzanne, thank you for being on Chamber Chat today, and thank you for all the good work that you do. You are a well-deserving member of the month. Right, thank you. Please stay with us. We're going to take another short commercial break, and we will be right back. At Windstream, we're offering our customers a new feature, Watch TV Everywhere. Now you can watch available episodes of favorite shows, movies, and live news and sports on tablets, smartphones, and laptops. There's no extra charge from Windstream. You only need to be a cable customer already receiving a win package. It's simple to get started. Just visit WatchTVEverywhere.com. So enjoy, and thanks for being our customer. Thank you for staying with us. Our last guest today is Myra Chandler with the Mountain Education Charter School. Welcome, Myra. Thank you, Judy. When was the Habersham Char Mountain Education School started? Okay. Um, 
our our site, the Habersham site, started in August of 08, 2008. So we've been been there for several years now. Um, Stevens County started their site uh, about a year and a half before we did, and I started there actually, and then moved to Habersham here because I love it. I think it's a great thing. So we have been in existence that long, and since our site, we now have White County. Raymond has started a site, Forsyth County has started a site, Bowman has started a site. Um, it, we're really are they growing. all parts of the yes. Mountain Education yes. Charter School? Yes, yes, so there are 11 how, sites. That is interesting, so it's made up of, uh, of uh, several sites. Right, exactly, and ours is just one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, we're very blessed to have it because it's a great opportunity for our students in Habersham County. Yes, it is. And let's just start off and okay. kind of explain what it is. Some people think that it is an alternative school. Is it an alternative school? No, it is not. We are an alternate mm -hmm. to a regular program, but we are not alternative. Our students are, we have any kind of student that you can name, just like any other school, but we are not alternative. And I think part of You're that not alternative for, for Bad, bad students, students for right. bad students for behavior problems. Right, we are not, um, and I think part of that started because we were housed in the same building where Habersham County's alternative school was, and we we're in the evening, and they would be in the daytime. And I think a lot of people kind of got the idea that oh, they must be an alternative school as well, but we are not. What ages do you serve? Fourteen through twenty-one. Okay, now, can any student who wants to choose to go to Mountain Education Charter School, or do they need some extenuating circumstances to get them approved to go there? Any or if it's just their choice, can it's they go? It's their choice. And we have some students who do choose to come to our site instead of going to your traditional mm -hmm. uh, schools because uh, of various and sundry reasons. Some need to work during the day mm -hmm. and since we're an evening program because we're open from four to nine in, mm -hmm. at night our students can go to work in the day and then come to school at night uh, we have some students who are parents I'm and sure you do and they need somebody at home to take care of their children when mm -hmm. they can come to school we've had some students with health issues mm -hmm. and they would have the morning to sleep later and get themselves ready and then come in the evenings to our school mm -hmm. and I, it works or out really well. Or maybe just some students who really are not at all interested in all the extracurricular of the regular high school they're just serious students and they just want to go to school and not have anything else. You're absolutely right we have some that'll say I don't like the trauma in the drama, you know, and so they will come to our school. Mm -hmm. um, our curriculum is set up, Judy, where the students can work on their own. Mm -hmm. It's a mastery approach, mastery-based mm -hmm. learning, mm -hmm. which means that our students cannot fail, for one thing. Mm -hmm. They have to achieve a certain score to move on, mm -hmm. and they also get to work at their own pace. It's individualized. You and I could be in the same classroom working on the same thing. It might take you 82 hours to complete and me 105, but that's okay. We're mm -hmm. working at our own pace. But when you get to wherever, to that point, both of us would know it. Absolutely. Well, we tell me, now do your students get a diploma? They sure do. That's another misconception. A lot of people think we're GED. We do not offer GED at our school. We're strictly diploma. And what does your diploma say? Mountain Education Charter School? Yes. Or does it say the, uh, the school they transferred from? No, we are our own high school. We're Mountain Education Charter High School. Our diplomas say that. Mm -hmm. We even have our own graduation. We have caps and gowns. We have invitations. We have a good little ceremony. And it, it's just a great, we had about 40 graduates last year. Very good. We did. Very good. And my background, Myra, as you know, is education. And I know what a need there is for those students who don't fit in somewhere else. And I just feel that you all are taking up part of the slack for uh, the students who drop out somewhere else or just don't want to go, they, they don't drop, maybe they don't really drop out, they just want somewhere else to go. But I feel like you are helping increase the graduation rate in Habersham County. Absolutely, and I, I don't know how many times I thought, because I was at Habersham Central, I tease and say for 100 years, I was there a long time. You were a counselor? Uh-huh, yes, and which is what I do at Mountain Ed. But I wish so many times I had a place 
to have sent students who had to drop out and they would come to me and I had no place to send them. Mm -hmm. And this is just wonderful because now these students can actually earn their diploma and I think it's just wonderful. It is. It is. Well, is Mountain Education Charter High School accredited? It is. It's SACS accredited and the credit that our students earn can be transferred to any other high school in the state of Georgia or college. To a college. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about your teachers. Now, are your teachers public uh, certified? Yes, they are. Our teachers have to have the same certifications that any public high school teacher. Uh, well, that makes teacher. sense because if you're SACS accredited, right. Right. They're going to have, you're going to have to have the same standards. Right. Matter of fact, if you visit our campus and people who have been in this system for a long time would probably recognize a lot of the teachers because a lot of them come and work part time for us. Some have retired, some still working during the day and come work a night or two at our site. So yes, we're fully, fully accredited to have some excellent teachers. You know what I think, Myra? I think you get the best of the best to teach out there because it's those who want to teach and love teaching. They may, they don't want to quit teaching. Right. And, and they just want to stay in the profession. I think that's a good opportunity and they for have, them. Excuse me, but and they have a heart for the students, the, the people out there, and I, I think that's a good thing too. They well, let's to talk about the curriculum. Okay. What is a curriculum of the Mountain Education School? It's the exact school? same thing that any student going anywhere will have to do, the core curriculum. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't offer all the electives that mm -hmm. some schools can, right. we can't. Sure. But all of the same uh, core curriculum, and the same mandated uh, test mm -hmm. have to be performed by our students as they would any student to get a diploma. Mm -hmm. And it's aligned, you know, our courses are aligned with the, the state guidelines. Mm -hmm. Well, now, again, tell our audience what are, uh, where the Mountain Education is, uh, Charter School is located, what your hours are, and if someone is interested in finding out more about the school, tell them how they can get in touch okay. with you or someone. Right. We are located at the old Fairview Elementary School, and that is in Demarest. Um, we also, our phone number, if you want to call during the day, uh, one of our site administrators is usually there, or our registrar, and it, the number is 706-754-4461. Uh, our hours are four to nine for students. Uh, now. Like I said, our site administrators and registrar are usually there a little earlier in the day, mm -hmm. and sometimes some of the teachers, but uh, because they mentor. We have mentors. Every, every student is assigned a mentor. We have a good mentoring program. So we do have that going for, for our students, a lot of help. And we do a lot of things and celebrate activities. We have that coming up in February. We want them to come and, and be there, and we've done a lot of things for them uh, with uh, dinners and um, Activity, uh, career nights and mm -hmm. taking them on field trips and things like that. So mm -hmm. we try to treat our students just like they would be treated anywhere else. Or better. Or better. Or better. That's that right. right. Or better. Myra, thank you so much for being on Chamber Chat today. There's so much more we could talk about, but we don't have time. Maybe you can come back another time. I would love to. I could talk on and on. I can tell that you could. <laughs> I can tell you're passionate I about know. what you do. Okay. And I usually end with a quote, and my quote today is about education, and it is from the recently deceased Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Thank you for joining us. I will see you next time.